the world embracing evil. My beloved brothers and sisters, we are living in a world that has accepted evil. A world that has rejected God. A world that sees evil as normal, but sees righteousness as abnormal. A world embracing wickedness. A world that has opened its arms to evil. A world affectionate to evil. A world that supports evil. A world that has welcomed evil. Beloved, this is a generation that has abandoned God. A generation that knew not God. A generation that lost interest in God. A generation that has turned away from the truth. A generation that has forsaken assembly. A generation that is engulfed in sin. A generation immersed in sin, covered in sin. My brothers and sisters, this is a generation that has embraced hell, a generation consumed in the flesh. Beloved, we are people that would rather go to hell than give up flesh. We are people that would rather perish than crucify the flesh. Beloved, a few months ago, Pastor Simeon closed out a revival at our church and he asked the question, he said, what in hell do you want? I think that's a question that we need to revisit and a question we ought to ask ourselves over and over again. What in hell do you want? Or what in hell do you need? What in hell is so appealing? What in hell do we desire? Because there's not going to be any love in hell. There won't be any grace in, in hell. There's not going to be any joy in hell. There won't be any forgiveness in hell. There, there won't be a revival in hell. There won't be any restoration. Or you won't find any refreshments in hell. So again, what do you want in hell? Beloved, we love to be entertained. And Satan is being filtered into every aspect of our lives. He's being filtered in our schools and he's being filtered on our jobs. He's being filtered in sports and in music and on television and on the radio. And Satan has even infiltrated the church. I say that because we are people that would rather be entertained than saved. We would rather be entertained and learn about Jesus. We would rather be entertained and converted. We would re re we reject transformative preaching for entertainment, for, for lies and heresy. And, and heresy is a division that threatens the unity of Christians. It threatens the unity of believers. It threatens the unity of all the children of God. But beloved, again, we are a world embracing evil. A world that has embraced false doctrine. A world that is embracing false teaching. You see, beloved, Satan has continued his efforts to make sin less offensive. He tries to tell us, you know, it's okay to sin. He's telling us it's okay to have all of our flesh lit. Desires. He wants to make heaven less appealing. He said, why go to heaven when you can have heaven here on earth? And he wants to make hell less horrific. He said, there's no such thing as hell, fire, and brimstone. There's no such thing as eternal damnation. And he wants to make the gospel less urgent. You don't have to come to Jesus today. You have plenty of time to come to Jesus. But I'm here to tell you, I want to encourage you, don't worry about being rejected. They rejected Jesus. So surely they will reject you and I. But I want to tell you that when they reject you, they're not rejecting me, but they're rejecting God. But I'm here to tell you that church folks take a break. But the devil is always on his job. And just think how powerful we would be if God's people were always on our job like Satan is always on his job. See, 
Sister Beloved, we have to be a visible representative of Jesus Christ. Your Christ, your Christianity should be visible to a culture that rejects God and everybody else is coming out of the closet and you might as well come out too. Because no Christian should be in the closet. But let your light so shine. I'm going to tell you that again. I said your Christianity should be visible to a culture that rejects God and everybody else is coming out of the closet and you might as well come out too because no Christian should be in the closet but let your light so shine. Well, I'm here to tell you that part-time Christians can defeat full-time devils. I'm going to tell you that again. I said a part-time Christian can defeat a full-time devil. Beloved, we can't be afraid of darkness. And why is that? Because we are the light. And beloved, when the light comes on, darkness disappears. That darkness ought to be afraid of you. Darkness needs to know that when you show up, darkness will cease to exist. Beloved, can I tell you that the world is not ashamed to let it be known that I don't believe in God. Never notice that sinners are not afraid to sin. Unbelievers are not afraid not to believe. And nor can Christians be afraid to let it be known I'm down with Jesus Christ. No, no matter what my faith is in Jesus, no matter who doesn't believe, I believe in God. So I'm going to finish what? Started. I believe in God, so I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to keep the faith. And beloved, faith is not just starting something, but faith is finishing. Paul said, I fought a good fight. He said, I kept the faith. I finished my course. Well, beloved Paul, he writes to Timothy and he says to him that in the last days, perilous times will come. Yeah. 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 Beloved, prison is the last place from which you expect to receive a letter of encouragement. Yeah. And that is where Paul's second letter to Timothy originates. That he begins assuring Timothy of his continual love and prayers. And he reminds him of his spiritual heritage and responsibilities. Yeah. He says, only the ones who persevere, whether a soldier or an athlete or a farmer or a minister of Jesus Christ, will we reap the rewards. See, Paul, he warns Timothy that his teachings will come under attack. As men deserve the truth for itching ear word. But with Paul, but Timothy has Paul's example to guide him and God's word to fortify him as he faces growing opposition and Growing opportunities in the last days. Beloved, the majority of commentators have referred the last days here spoken to be the immediate preceding times of the second coming of Jesus Christ. A day and hour somewhere in the future. But he not only from man, but also from angels and even from the sun. Beloved, I want to tell you that the day of the Lord is coming. And I'm so glad that Jesus will come and set the record straight. That Jesus will come and marry his bride and we'll be caught up in all of his glory. Nobody tells him that perilous times shall come. D difficult times shall come. Times of danger and persecution. And of, tri of trial and times hard to bear troublesome times, dangerous yeah. times, times of reducing yeah. strength. Yeah. Yeah. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul says to Timothy that the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will turn away from the truth and yeah. give head to seducing spirits, yeah. deceitful spirits, and, and, and teaching of demons. Can I tell you that if we're not careful, then the enemy will seduce us. The enemy will entice us to 
leave God. And if our faith is not strong, we will abandon God. I said the enemy will try to entice you. He will try to seduce you. And if your faith is not strong in God, then you'll turn your back on God. So this is why Paul gives charge to Timothy. He said, preach the word. Because the time will come where people will turn away from God. People will turn away from righteousness. People will turn away from the truth. So that people will turn away from God and repent to Satan. Do you understand when we turn our back on God, we're asking Satan for forgiveness. I didn't think I'd get nobody to, to, to say too much when I said that. I'm trying to put something on you. I said when we turn our back on God, then we're asking the devil for forgiveness. So beloved, the time will come when people will embrace evil. You see, Paul wanted to warn Timothy, but he also wanted to warn us to be careful. To, to be watchful, to be on guard, because there's too many of us that are loving what God hates and hating what God loves. I said there's too many of us that are hating what God loves, and we're loving what God hates. And beloved, if it doesn't involve you, then it shouldn't involve you. I said if it doesn't end involve you, then it shouldn't involve you. And if we're not feeding on God, then we are indulging in the devil. Beloved, there are 168 hours in a week. And how many of those hours are we spending with God other than the two hours we come to church? So I'm going to tell you that again. I said there are 168 hours in a week. And how many of those hours are we spending with God other than the two hours we spend in church? How many of those hours are we praying? How many of those hours are we fellowshipping with God, reading our Bible? How many of those hours are we communing with God? Beloved, we must be a church beyond the walls. Because what we do away from church is more important than what we do at church. In other words, are our lights still shining at the church or do we turn off the lights and return to darkness? I said, are we keeping our lights on at the church? Or did we flip the switch off and return back to Satan? So beloved, the world is embracing evil because so many Christians are embracing evil as well. And if no, if, if the world has no example to follow, then they will embrace evil because the devil has always had his arms open, but not so much the church. But can I tell you that everyone the devil rejects, everyone the church rejects, the devil accepts. I'll tell you that again. I, I see the enemy. I guess he think that he gonna try to stop me and hinder me from preaching. So I guess I got to preach a little harder. I say if the world has no example to follow, then they will embrace evil because the devil always has his arms open. But but sometimes the church closes their arms, and, and everyone the church rejects, the devil will accept. So so another. Take notice of this. And in the last days, not only the very last days, but toward the end of, of the world, but, but, but in general, the days to come of the future times. So rather near or off, far off. He said difficult times shall come. He said the difficult times will, will set in. They, they will be upon us. Said so people will only love themselves. So they will be boastful and proud and scoffing at God. Beloved, in Second Peter, Peter told us the, the same thing. He said, Beloved, I write unto you this second epistle, and then both I, I stir up a pure mind by way of reminding. He said that you may be mindful of the words which 
which were spoken by the holy prophets. And of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and saints. He said, knowing this, that scoffers will come in the last days. Walking according to their own looks. So he said, men would be disobedient to parents. That we would be ungrateful. So that we would consider nothing sacred. That we would be unloving and unforgiving. That we would slander others and have no self control. And that we would be cruel and hate what is good. That we would betray friends. That we would be reckless and puffed up with pride and love, pleasure rather than God. So that we would act religious but reject the power that can make us godly. And beloved, a lot of people believe that God exists, but they don't believe in God. I'm going to say that again. They believe that God exists, but they don't believe in the power of God. But beloved, doesn't it sound like the times we live in now? Doesn't it sound like modern day society? That these perilous times are upon us. Now, and we have to confront this evil. We have to confront this uh, apostasy. We have to confront this false teaching. We have to confront this false doctrine. We have to confront this hypocrisy. We have to confront this false Christianity. And beloved, you say, well, you may say, well, how do we do this? And I'm going to tell you, by staying obedient to God. I said we do this by staying obedient to God. By being thoroughly equipped and complete in God for every good work. By being competent Christians. See, beloved, Paul is still preoccupied with the future of the gospel. See, his mind now dwells on the evil of the times. And you see, the problem is Timothy is so weak and the opposition is so strong. You ever notice that the opposition is so bold, the opposition is so brave, the opposition is not ashamed. But remember, if we have gotten weak, then be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might and put on the full armor of God that we may be able to withstand the walls of the devil. But beloved Lord, take away anything that is distracting us from getting closer to you. Oh God, if it doesn't please you, then I, I don't want it. See, beloved, what we do in life echoes in eternity, and the righteous will be remembered forever. I said, what we do in, in what we do in life echoes in eternity, and, and the righteous will be remembered forever. Beloved, we should be we should want to be remembered for bringing glory to God. We should be want to remember for bringing the gospel to a dying world. And if we don't have a, a burning passion for God, and if we lose our passion for God, how can we expect non-believers and sinners to come to the cross no matter how much room there is? And we like to tell people there's room at the cross, but the people that should be there are not there, but we keep trying to petition people to come to the cross. But beloved, we have to act like the Bible is true. I said we have to act like the Bible is true. I'm going to pose a question. Do you really believe the word of God? Do you believe when it says I'm more than a, than a conqueror? Do you believe when it says that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his I shall I won't so beloved Satan is using the same tricks he used in the garden see Satan has convinced so many that God is a liar Satan has never changed his, his tactics he put the word of God on trial there were so many prosecutors and witnesses against God with, with so many embracing evil. Is there anyone that will testify to Jesus? 
Is there anyone that will speak up for Jesus? That the word of God is on trial and will you defend the kingdom of God? Beloved, I want to know if anyone accused you of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us or at trial we'd be like Peter and deny Jesus too? So I'm going to ask you that again. I said, if anyone accused us of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us? Or at trial, would we be like Peter and deny Jesus too? So beloved, how many modern day Christians are denying Jesus right now? How many modern day Christians are, are really atheists because a wolf can only pretend to be a sheep for so long? I said a wolf can only pretend to be a sheep so long before he is found out. And know this, eventually our sins will find us out. So beloved, I'm trying to get out of the way, but I just want to tell you if we continue to resist Jesus, one day Jesus is going to resist us. Beloved, yeah. the worst thing that we could ever hear is, is for Jesus to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Said, said, I never knew you in hell is, is being separated from God forever. Yeah. I wasn't trying to go there, but you were not Okay, I said hell is, is being separated from God forever. And I don't want to be separated from God for 30 seconds. I, I don't want to be separated from God for five minutes. That five seconds of being separated from God is too long. I don't ever want to be out of God's presence. I don't ever want to be out of God's glory. I don't ever want to get away from the anointed, but I want to get closer and closer. I want to get higher and higher. I want to go deeper and deeper. I want to keep getting closer to Jesus. So beloved, when the world embraces evil, then we must, but with the world embracing evil, then we must continue to embrace God. That when the world embraces evil, we must continue to seek God. That with the world embracing evil, we must continue to love God. With the world embracing evil, we must continue to obey God. With the world embracing evil, we must continue to embrace God. May God bless you. And may God keep you. Remember, we are living in a world that is embracing evil. But continue to be a visible representative of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to shine light in the darkness. Don't be afraid to say, for God, I live and for God, I die. Don't be afraid to look crazy sometimes, but to look good for Jesus sometimes. I got to look crazy. 